repeat sleep boxing repeat i'm delighted to be joined by paul and elliot on this tuesday afternoon um we are here to discuss the big fight between terence crawford and sean porter taking place next weekend in las vegas um chaps good afternoon how, how are you doing all good mate all good thanks you're good mate good looking forward to it looking forward to nice discussion fun. and the fight nice and cool thanks 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 very much for your for your time really, really appreciate it and yeah i want to th think I personally, I think this is a potential fight of the year contender. I think this is Terence Crawford's biggest challenge at welterweight so far that he's had. And yeah, I think it's a good fight between two top fighters. So so you'd like to think it would be a good one. Um, going to kind of go straight into it and say you'd think that Terence Crawford is the favourite for this fight. Um, he's the current world champion. He's undefeated, whereas Sean Board has a couple of losses on his record. Want to ask... I'll go to Paul first and want to say if Crawford's going to win this fight, do you think it's more likely to be on points or on or by KO? And bearing in mind Crawford's had five fights at welterweight, five KOs, Porter's never been stopped. Maybe that says Crawford will win on points, maybe not. But I just want to get your opinion. If Crawford was to win, how do you think he wins this fight? Um, I would had I would have to edge towards a Crawford stoppage, to be honest with you. Um I know, as you said there, um, Spence Porter hasn't been stopped before. Um, and he's tough. He is as tough as they come as well. And that sometimes does, that's maybe discrediting his actual ability as well, his toughness. But no, I, I think Crawford, as you mentioned there, the five stoppages, wins in a row. And even before that, I know it was in the weight division below. But the last fight that he didn't stop um, his opponent was, I believe, Postal in 2016. So that's quite a long time ago, over five years ago, Um since he hasn't got his opponent out of there um, in the distance. So I, I think, yeah, I think Crawford, by a late stoppage, I know we might be doing a prediction or whatever later, but I would have to edge towards a Crawford stoppage victory, um, personally. Fair enough. And I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask Elliot the same question, really. Um, do you think, yeah, do you think we're likely to see, I'm not saying, you know, Crawford's definitely going to win. How's he going to win? I'm saying, yeah, like, if, you, if, you, if he was to win, how do, how do, you, see, how do you see it happening, Elliot? Um, you know what? It's a tough one. I'd, it is issue that for me that the, the debate is whether he'll win by KO or not. But I think looking at it, I mean, I mean, you say obviously he's had five stoppages at the weight, but you've got to look at it so long ago. Two of those fights with Kel Brook and Amy Card. So you're sitting there going, all right, so let's probably knock it down to three. And then like, there's a kind of, of um, I think, <clears throat> I think look, Sean Porter's obviously like said, he's never been stopped and he's been in CV wise with some better fighters than Terence Crawford, in my opinion. There's a bigger fight in some ways for Crawford to prove himself than it is for Porter. I think Crawford will win. I mean, I've got a prediction, obviously, we're doing it later, but I think um, he will win. But I, I, to be honest with you, I, I can see it. 50, it's 50 50 for me. I think if it is going to be a stoppage, like Paul said, it'd be a late stoppage. Um, obviously, we saw him touch down against Errol Spence, obviously, Crawford, more concussed than Spence. So I think, I think somewhere around 10 to 12, he could possibly stop him. Um, but if I had to put my neck out on the line, I don't think he will. I think it'll be a points win. Fair enough. No, 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 next next on the line indeed. Fair, fair play to both of you. Um, so now we've kind of discussed Crawford a bit there. Obviously, at the same time, got to accept you'd like to think this would be a competitive fight, two of the best welterweights in the world. Um, so just want to focus on Porter now. Just want to ask, do you see this as a 50-50 fight or or not? And if it's not a 50-50 fight, how much of a chance do you give do you give Porter? Do you give him like a 10% chance or a 30%? Talk to me about it. Elliot, I'll, I'll, I'll go to you first on this one. You know, I think I, I agree with Paul when Paul was saying that I think Porter is unlucky and I think that his boxing ability is often overlooked um, in the sense of him just being kind of durable. But then also you have to look at it and go, every time he's kind of stepped up to those sort of next level fighters, he's tended to lose. So you look at, obviously, he's lost to Thurman, Errol Spence, um, lost to Kelbrook as well. But obviously, yeah, there's good wins on there against like Danny Garcia and people, and even a kind of Adrian Broner, and they make of Adrian Broner what you will. Um, and the Spence fight was closer than I think I thought it would be going into it. Um, so, yeah, I think, I don't think, I think he's got a live chance, definitely. I uh, do think, like I said, with Terence Crawford, like, we're going to come across probably as a bit, that's a bit strange in saying this, but I've never, like, obviously, you see him buzzing around the sort of like pound for pound list. But for me, I always think that he needs he needs a couple of better opponents on his on his resume before we can even start talking like that. So I think for him, 
coming in here against Port as that's a chance for him to actually elevate his position. Um, so I actually think I wouldn't see it as, as an 80 20 by any stretch. Um, I think Crawford will win, but I see it more like the purse, like the purse is itself 60 40 probably. I think I'm leaning towards towards Crawford in this one. Um, yeah. But equally, equally, Port has got a chance. And they're both the same age as well. So you're looking at it that way, there's not a lot to really choose um, between them. I mean, I suppose you'd say, yeah, that you'd have to say that Port has got more miles on his clock. Um, a lot of those split decision wins or like decision wins that he's had in a lot more rounds. So that might come into it. But I think he's definitely got an opportunity. Definitely got an opportunity here. Um, so I think it's 60 40, 60 40, 40 Crawford, in my opinion. And similar sort of question that we touched on with, with Crawford. If Port is going to win, what do you think is more likely, a, a KO win or a, a points win? Um, bearing in mind, Porter's got 31 wins, 17 by stoppage. Um, but yeah, what do you think? What do you think is more? What do you think is more likely there? <clears throat> no, I think it would have to. It would be. It would be points win. Um, yeah. You know, just looking at. I mean, even. I mean, the last person he stopped obviously was Andre Berto. That was obviously long past his best then. Um, and you go through it and. He hasn't really stopped anyone of who's either not been past their best years or, frankly, not in the same class as him. So I think if he does win, it will be it will be close and it will be one points. I'm sorry, you know, even something like a 115, 113, don't think he'll dominate Crawford either. He'd have to, I mean, to get that score, he probably would have to beat him quite convincingly. But I still think it'll come down to like a 115, 113 victory if he does win it. Um, maybe 116, 112 sort of margin. It won't be by much. Yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Um, Paul, same question to you. Really, how much, how much of a chance are you giving Porter in this fight? And if he was to win, do you agree with Elliot that it's likely to be on points? Do you think there's a chance he could go ahead and, and stop Crawford? Yeah, I mean, I definitely do think he has a chance. He's, it's he's still a top, a top welterweight. Um, no questions asked. I think he's still in the top five that arguably the top five in the weight so i think you i think that it is definitely going to be a tough test for Crawford. i don't think it'll be an easy night especially if it's the porter that turns up um i did against spence because i i agree with what elliot said there um i think porter porter did a lot better against spence than people thought he would do perhaps um and it kind of surprised a lot of people especially with on the run that spence had been on and everyone just thought he was going to be you know, blasting out everybody and, and winning convincingly. But no, it was a very competitive fight and I could see that being the case again. Um, I know I mentioned that I think Crawford could end up stopping him, but I think it, you know, it wouldn't be one where it wouldn't be like a beat down. For me, I think it would be, you know, a tight enough fight. He'll be ahead by a couple of rounds, but I do still think Spence, and sorry, not Spence, Portal will win. Porter will win some rounds during the fight. I, as, as Elliot mentioned again as well, the he, he's only lost, I know he's lost three times, but they're all to the elite guys. So, yeah. Brooke was kind of in his prime probably at this because I know it was when Brooke won the title but you had like a, a Brooke win when Brooke won that it's a completely different Brooke that um, Terence Crawford obviously then went on to beat so I think you know the, it was roughly a prime Brooke Thurman was looked really good then and then Spencer they're there again they're to the top guys at that time in the division whenever they fought so yeah he definitely gives gives um, Crawford problems I don't think it'll be an easy night's work at all and um, and if I was to kind of put it percentage-wise, um, not too dissimilar to what I had said, I'd maybe go 65-35 or even 70-30 to him in favour of Crawford. Um, I'm a big Crawford fan, and I hope this is kind of his... You know, we've probably been saying this for years now since he's moved up to World of but I hope this is his coming-out party, in, in a sense, because it would definitely be his biggest win, um, his most notable win on his record. I know he's got some big names, but you know, for kind of you still have to admit that Porter's... It might be be past his prime a little bit, but he's more of a live fight than what Khan was, what Brooke was. Um, I know he has some other good wins, Crawford. At, well, there is it Kavalowskis and um, Jeff Horn. Ben, Jeff Horn, and then there's a I can't remember. Ben, it's not Ben. It's not Benavidez. Is that the right one? It is, yeah. Um, as well. So they're obviously good wins, but I think if he was to beat Porter, that would definitely be his best win. Certainly, well, the anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good. Yeah, making me look look forward to the fight even more, and um, yeah, it's good to, good to, good to preview it with 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 both of you. Um, this is going to move on to now to post fight. I feel like if Porter was to win the fight, I think there's, there's a good chance you'll see you'll see an immediate rematch. Um, but I want to kind of say to you, with Crawford being the favourite, if we think Crawford's going to win the fight, where does 
he go next? I personally can't imagine him fighting in a different weight division in this next fight. I personally, I don't see the Errol, Spike, Errol Spence fight happening next because it's just it's just too difficult, and I don't I don't think anyone knows when Spence is going to be back in the ring. So yeah, I was kind of looking for you. If you disagree with any of that, feel free to disagree. Um, but I just kind of looking for some names, really. Where does where does where does Crawford go on? What other names do you, do you want him? To, do you want to see him fight in, in the in the division? I'll go. I'll go with Elliot first. I think um, <clears throat> I agree with you in the sense that I don't think if I all spent next. Um, I actually do think that fight might happen though at some point. Maybe not, not next, but I think maybe two two down the line, maybe three down the line. Um, I mean, you look at the names of the division, really, and you're like thinking, well, if he doesn't fight him and he's already beaten Porter, then you're looking around, you're going, well, who's he going to fight? Like, Ugas, like Garcia. I mean, probably drop down again, so probably not. Um, and it's pretty thin, really. Ortiz Jr., I suppose, you could fight. But, I mean, fairly thin on the ground, I think. So, frankly, like, I wouldn't be that interested in him fighting anyone else other really than Errol Spence, but I'd accept maybe a fight, a fight in with someone else in the meantime. Um, and like Paul's kind of saying as well, like if he comes out from this fight, if he wins, this is like say a coming out fight would be his best fight on the record. Um, so in a way you want to kind of short, you want to kind of continue that momentum. So maybe take, I mean, maybe take like a tune, tune up or a bit of a lesser opponent next time and then go into Errol Spence. But to be honest with you, that's the only real fight I see for either of these two after this. Um, if they want to sort of really maximize, I suppose, legacy and potential. And, you know, it's, like I say, it's a competitive environment. We've seen a lot of, a lot of guys taking risks um, in other divisions and um, promoting themselves and pushing themselves further up to the point really where if you're not talking about Crawford fighting Spence, then you're not really going to be talking about him either. Um, that's the only real fight, I think. So, yeah, maybe not, not next time round, but I think I think um, it will happen. Maybe two or three down the line. Just want, just want to follow up on that. Like, you just made me think, just want to get your opinion on something. Crawford's a three year world champion. 34 years old, come up from lightweight, now fighting at welterweight. Do you can you see him ever moving up again? Not not necessarily because he can't get any fights at welterweight or because he's just bored of being a welterweight, but can you see him can you see him moving up again? Can you can you see that happening ever? Um not unless not unless he fights Spence, no. Um just for the simple reason I think. I mean, maybe, well, let's actually, let's break it down a bit different. So obviously he's, like you say, he's 34 now. So maybe if it comes down to kind of a weight issue and obviously he's got kind of, he's obviously got power, obviously he's proven that. But then I look, I mean, I look at the guys above that. So you've got like the Charlos, I mean, the, in the in the weight above, like maybe, maybe he could compete against those guys, but I don't know. I mean, Fowler's in the weight above, isn't he? I'd love to see that. Um, but I think, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think, I don't know if he, I don't think he would unless he walked into necessarily a title fight straight away. I think it would make sense. Um, and especially without having fought Errol Spence, unless Spence goes up as well, I don't think it would happen. So, um, no, not not immediately. But unless there was kind of weight issues or promotional issues, possibly you can't rule it out, obviously, boxing. But yeah, I mean, just thinking of the guys up there, I mean, who would he have to fight? Maybe like, there's some tough fights up in that division, though, like Lara. Charlo, I just don't know he would, if he necessarily would want that, want that challenge or necessarily would thrive in that challenge, considering the guys, not without going through Spence first. Was, uh, I suppose my shortest answer, <laughs> not without yeah. doing that first. I'd, um, I'd lean towards personally. I'm not sure I ever see him going up that that big. I personally think I don't see him as a particularly big welterweight. I think he's grown into the weight. But I personally think unless there are no big fights for him at welterweight left, I, I'm not sure I see that happening personally, but we'll see. It would be very exciting if he did. I'm, I'm all up, up for fighters moving up and down the weight divisions as they, as they please. Um, so Paul, going to go to you as well. Um, where, if Crawford wins, there's a big if. If Crawford wins, what do you? Where do you want to see him him fight next? Do you do you think there's a possibility of of the Earl Spence fight happening in 2022? But what, give me some other names that you you really want to see Crawford go up against. Yeah, I think obviously the Spence fight's just the one that we all really, really want. But like you guys, I'm kind of a bit sceptical. I just don't, even if he was the win and it was an impressive win, and even if in the, in the post-fight he was like, yeah, I want I want Errol Spence next, I, just, I still don't see it happening next. 
I, I like Elliot. I do actually think it will happen. I think that fight is too big not to happen. Mm. Um, I think it will eventually happen, maybe back end of the year, another year too late. You just don't want to get that fight too late because I think Crawford's obviously a good few years older than Spence as well. Um, so maybe from Spence's perspective, maybe he wants to wait a few more years um, because he might play into his hands. But in terms of other guys, really, I think the only ones, obviously, um, since Ugas beat Pacquiao, you know, Crawford could maybe fight him if he was to win, pick up another belt. But then there's a weird situation going on without the WBA belt as well, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, it wasn't a bad shot as well from Elliot. You know, one of the young, hungry, up-and-coming guys. Well, maybe give them a chance against Crawford, your Boots Ennis or your Virgil Ortiz, someone like that. You never know. I mean, I would, I would still think Crawford. I think maybe at that, this stage of their careers, it's still a wee bit too early for them to fight Crawford. But it's a fight I still wouldn't mind seeing. One of those guys, who knows? We saw it like we thought Tefimo Lopez was biting off more than he can than chew against um, Lomachenko. So I think similarly, it was kind of in the same scenario as what is um, of what Boots Ennis and. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, or you never know, they might, they maybe would be able to pull it off. And then I was just, I was just kind of thinking off the top of my head there. I believe Porter, if he was to win as well, um, it would be if he was to win. Obviously, he'd get Crawford's belts, but he already has a win over Ugas. Um, so you're like maybe from if you're coming at it from Porter's perspective, he'd be like, I've already beat Ugas. I'll I'll, I'll give him a rematch to pick up another belt. Mm. So you know, you know, you can never know. In two fights time, Sean Porter could be the guy. At 147 yeah. again. Um, I think that, but yeah, ultimately it's the, it's the Spence one that we want to fight and uh, that we want to see with Crawford. But yeah. will it happen next? Doubtful. I think you're right. I think for as until that fight does happen, if it does, that's always going to be the centre of, com- of the conversation, whether you've got Ugas, Virgil, Tees, whoever, that's that's the fight that people want to see. But who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see it, maybe we won't. All right. Um, coming towards the end of our chat now, gents, but I know we touched on predictions beforehand, but if possible, want like a concrete prediction from you both, bearing in mind this is before fight week, this is before the press conference, the way in people are allowed to change their mind if they want to. Just bearing in mind this is a couple of weeks before fight night. Um, Paul, going to go to you first. If you'd like to, what is your what is your prediction for this fight? Yeah, I kind of alluded to it at the beginning. I, th- I think... I think we're going to see a Crawford stoppage. I really do. Mm-hmm. I think Crawford's going to stop Porter. Definitely, it would. I don't. For me, it wouldn't be the first half of the fight unless you just caught him cold. But I don't see that happening. And um, so for me, it would be the second half of the fight, edging towards the later rounds. So I'll I'll go, I'll go rounds. I'll I'll do it. Give you a two round. I'll go rounds nine to ten. So there's that's my bracket. I think Crawford could stop him rounds nine to 10, but it wouldn't be surprised if it was 11 or 12 as well, but I don't want to pick four rounds. That's too many. Yeah, no, it's completely, completely fine. Well, it's yeah, pretty, pretty, um, yeah, pretty standout prediction there. Um, Elliot, same question. Give me, give me a prediction. So tough. I think it depends. Obviously I think my part of my thinking is depends on the tactics that Porter brings into this. Um, I can I can easily see what Paul's saying is happening. Um, I can see him maybe like picking up some rounds early and then getting stopped late. But equally, I don't. I think it's going to be a hell of a fight to be honest. I'm actually I'm going to stick with what I was thinking initially, which is going to be uh, Crawford points, uh, relatively close, um, similar fireworks to what we saw tactically and and in the Spence fight with Crawford with Porter. Sorry, um, yeah, I'm going to go Crawford Crawford points. I can see a split D, but I'll probably I'm gonna go with, with UD. But I can I can see any of those three things happening, but I'm gonna stick my neck out and say I can point to UD Crawford. Fair enough. Interesting, interesting. Um if anyone what watched, about you, Elliot? Uh, what about me, you? uh um honestly before this I was going Crawford points. After this, I'm edging towards Crawford stoppage in the second half of the fight. And I'm going to sit on the fence because I'm in charge here. So, <laughs> yes, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say as well. Just up to you guys. Hmm. Where do you sit with with the legacy of Crawford? If he wins this, and obviously he's always buzzing around the top five pound for pound, hmm. do you think that's a legitimate place for him at the moment? And how do you see it after if he does win, wins in good fashion or just wins in general? Where would you rank him currently? I, yeah, I think Crawford is a is an elite top top fighter. But 
I just think he needs to have that defining fight at welterweight against an elite welterweight. And that's not again, that's not Sean Porter. And I think Sean Porter's great. I think Sean Porter's a great fighter. But the the Errol Spence fight needs to happen and he needs to win that fight for him to be a top five pound for pound. And I hope that doesn't sound like I'm taking anything away from him. I think he's Terence Crawford's one of my favorite fighters. I just think that if you look at his resume at welterweight, it's not amazing. The performances have been good. No, no question about the performances, but he you need to have that name on your record if you want to be a top five pound for hand, top five pound for pound, like like Canelo does, as like Usyk does, as as, as an example. Um, but yeah, good question. Yeah, I would agree 100. I think he needs. That like the Spence win would be a perfect one for, and then he's again all of a sudden in the debate for pound for pound, number one if he was to beat Spence. But at the minute, I still have him fringe top five of my pound for pound, um, just on skill set and like he does still have some good wins. We're probably not giving him enough credit for that. He does still have a few good wins, but you know we need that like Elliot says that one and not counting Sean Porter, um, as that one. But he needs that one big big win, the Spence win for example, and then yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, definitely, definitely up there. One of the best pound for pound fighters in the planet. Yeah. Elliot, what are, what are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I totally agree, lads. I, I've been kind of a fan of Crawford, but equally, like, when, when people start picking him in sort of top three, top four, I think, mm, I mean, <clears throat> just 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 basically based on that, really. Like, not on, on anything to do with skills, just on, on opponents faced. Um, and I look at other guys, like you said, obviously, Canelo, like, is a standout one, isn't he? For just, like, taking people on. Uh, any way and winning um but then like you say you sick and then um yeah i just don't think i think there's there's a gap between them two actually maybe then other like guys slightly beneath that i mean obviously you could even say like fury fighting wild or like put him up there um just these sort of massive fights that literally just you can only really i think enhance your legacy in be in in winning those um like lopez even in, in being low like stuff like that you just sort of think yeah these are standout standout wins that crawford doesn't have um, anyway, like the, the people that he's run through and the way he's run through him, you kind of look at him going, even he's up there. So it's like it's difficult to really to put him, I think, for me to put him in that elite level. Well, not, not, not the elite level, obviously, he's an elite fighter, but in that kind of category where you're just like nailed on name. Um, so he does need he does need that marquee name. And I think this is a way of stepping sort of getting there. But equally, like Paul was saying as well, like until he if he beats Spence and beats Spence convincingly, then yeah, you're you're putting in pen, you're not even in pencil no more, you're coming in in pen. So yeah. Well, I think yeah it's really interesting like I don't think anyone would deny would deny he's an, he's an elite fighter I just think yeah I think it sounds it sounds like we agree we just need to see him in in that um in that kind of career defining fight like with like Elliot mentioned with Tiafimo Lopez beating Lomachenko who at the time was considered as the best fighter in the world um you know I don't like it's not it's not Crawford's fault that he's in this position it's not his fault the Spence fight can't be made in my opinion and he's beating everyone who's put in front of him and yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks and um maybe see if the Spence fight can be made but um yeah it's all it's all it's always it's always interesting yeah cool all right lads well thanks for that yeah re really enjoyed that um looking forward to the fight itself looking forward to reviewing it with you guys as well and yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Cheers, lads. Cheers, Abe.